Hey there, it's Pete with GCI Turf. Hope you're having a great day today. It's getting about that time of the year. Uh, people are starting to think ahead and plan for aerating and overseeding, thinking about getting their yard in order before they do that. One of the things that we do as a company is as we're doing our uh, last application before aerating and seeding, we have a really good weed control mix uh, that we put in our sprayers that way we can clean up any weeds before we go into aerating and seeding. Typical weeds this time of the year, you might see a little crabgrass, you might see a little nut sedge, some lespedeza, spurge, you might see a little clover. There's a plethora of different weeds you might could possibly see in a yard. So the way I approach that is uh, I get with the guys and we go over to weed control and we put together a concoction that will kind of take care of everything in one lick. So we'll run Halo, that'll take care of the nut sedge, and then Quinclorac will take care of the crabgrass and also pick up a few other weeds. And then try and select, which is a three-way, which is a, a big, broad, general uh, three-way herbicide that's gonna clean up a tremendous amount of broadleaf weeds. And just depending on how I feel that particular day, we might mix that with a natural adjuvant or we mix it with MSO. Both of those are gonna kind of fall in the surfactant adjuvant realm and uh, sticker, you know, lots of people call it lots of different things, but regardless, they're gonna help the material, the chemical, the weed control stick to the plant and, and in, in some cases enter into the plant. That way it can do its thing and be more effective and really didn't take that weed out. I'll link all this stuff up in the description below. It'll be there, you can check it out if you want to. Now if you're just dealing with broad leaves, of course you don't need nothing but the uh, Triad Select. If you're dealing with nothing but crabgrass, of course you don't need nothing but the Quinclorac. If you're dealing with nuts edge, you don't need nothing but the Halo. One of the cool things about these products is that you can get them in little teeny tiny uh, packaging. That way if you got a little tiny yard, you get the smaller packaging and you ain't stuck with no bigger jugs sitting around the garage. So you can take any of these three and use them individually or you can use them in conjunction with each other. And that just all depends on the weeds that you got in your yard. Now another real cool thing about this particular mix is they're all labeled for uh, several different grass types. You know, I got Bermuda at the shop. I got tall fescue bluegrass mix right here I'm standing in. And I got 100% uh, Kentucky bluegrass back here in the back. In the Bermuda, I got a little crabgrass and I got a little bit of uh, nut sedge and uh, had a touch of Lespedeza out in one of the far corners. Then here in the fescue, really ain't got nothing but a little bit of nut sedge coming up. A few little broad leaves out there by the road that I had to spray. And back during the bluegrass, I had a little bit of crabgrass coming in, uh, about three or four little spots. It wasn't big at all. And I had a little nut sedge back there and some clover. The best approach for crabgrass is a twofold thing. One, thick turf. The thicker and denser you can get your turf, the better chance that the crabgrass ain't going to flush out and show itself. Number two is a pre-emergent. Of course, we do that way earlier in the year. You can't do that now. Once you see the crabgrass come up, you have to use post-emergent herbicide. These other three herbicides I'm talking about, they're all considered a post-emergent, meaning you spray them after you see the weed pop up. Well, Pete, why'd you get crabgrass? You do everything to a T and you put down your pre-emergence? Well, no, I didn't. I didn't put any pre-emergence down on the Bermuda. I have yet to put any on the uh, bluegrass back here except once in the fall. And if you remember right, remember back there this spring that I was going into the renovation for the bluegrass? I didn't put any pre-emergence on the fescue while it was back there either. And of course on my yard, I haven't put pre-emergence on my fescue out here in two years. And why not? Well, I'm just playing around like I normally do from time to time. I just was curious and wanted to see what happened. And uh, I've had zero outbreaks. I've just had a little bit here and there come up. So that's why I had to mix up this mixture is to get my weeds cleaned up. Now on the spraying equipment, of course I got DIY sprayers. I'll link those up in the description below too. I use my Flowzone uh, Cyclone for this particular application. And I got my little nozzle buddy pack. Uh, it's my favorite uh, spray nozzles and I use the trim nozzle. And the way I did this is I figured up I had roughly about a thousand square feet between the three yards to spray. So I put two gallons of water in my back vac sprayer. I put my halo in first, okay, because it's a, a, a granular 
that dissolves down with water so you want to always put those in first got that melted down good then i went in with my quin chlorac and then i went in with my three-way got all that mixed up stirred up real good then i put my mso in the reason i'm using mso in this video is to show you that you can use that or the adjuvant either one of them of course you can use the adjuvant and use lower rates of the herbicide and still get the same control been doing it for years but there's some of you watching that you don't want to be adjusting ph and you don't want to be doing all that kind of funky stuff so that's why i'm showing you the mso because that's just a different option you got once i got everything mixed up i primed my uh spray pump and the way i do that is just take my nozzle off turn the pump on stick it into the wand in the top of the tank and i let the pump flow and you'll see the water change colors and when you see it change colors you know you got chemical to the end of your spray wand once you do that you're ready to go spray i don't stand in one spot and soak down a plant or nothing like that i just walk a good steady comfortable pace and as i get to a weed i pull the trigger it's really that simple there's really three stipulations that i like to talk about and uh, they're all kind of revolve around safety and protecting the turf one is this is very important you want some moisture in the ground okay i know some folks do it but i personally am not a fan of it is going out and spraying herbicides over uh super dormant turf i just i'm not one of those guys who likes to do that so i prefer a little bit of moisture in the ground luckily we've gotten some pretty good rain here recently and everything's got moisture in the ground so i'm good there Number two is I'll make sure I mow and then I'll wait two days. That gives the turf time to grow and that's gonna help minimize the injury so you're not spraying herbicide on a freshly cut yard. And, and a second thing to that is it allows the weed to actually grow and that way you've got some material, some, some leaf blade surface so that the product can, can stick to it. Because you don't wanna mow and then go spray Depending on what the weed is, it may just be a stem sticking up. You know what I'm saying? You want some foliage from that weed sticking up uh, where when you spray it, the herbicide comes in contact with that leaf. And number three, if at all possible, uh, some of these have heat restrictions on them. And a lot of the times it's 85 degrees. So what that means is I don't want to spray it when it's 85 degrees or hotter, especially in direct sunlight. That could scorch the turf for lack of better words it could damage the turf a little bit so you want to wait if at all possible and spray it late in the day or either early in the morning or if you get a good shade over the yard if you noticed uh, out here at the bluegrass and the fescue and even at the bermuda the sun was on its way down it's not the heat of the day this is late in the afternoon it is uh 8 30 right now and I, I sprayed the shop around 6.30 ish or so and uh, around 7.30 is when I sprayed all this. So the temperature had you know, began to drop and you know, my cryptomeria shade all this out here in the afternoon. So you know, there's no fear for me spraying uh, in the heat of the day and causing any injury that way. So you know on a note on renovations, we've got renovation time coming up and of course I'm going to be doing a video real soon talking you through uh, some different scenarios about why I would do a renovation. But a lot of the times we'll pick up a new customer this time of the year and they think they need a renovation, meaning smoke it off and start over. But we show up and they just have a lot of crabgrass and they'll have a lot of clover or the uh, yard may be eat up with lespedeza or something like that and they have tons of good fescue tons of good fescue so we go in there do one good cleanup weed control come back in a month or so aerate it and seed it really heavy and it's just like they got a brand new yard so don't think that if you have clover and crabgrass uh, nut sedge and any of these other broadleaf summer weeds don't think you have to do a renovation just to have a nice yard because a lot of the times you don't so hey i hope this was helpful hopefully uh, you learned a little something about weed control and as always i appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch i'll check you later